Well, hey, Sunday School friends, it's Pastor Jeremy here with you again for our uh, weekly Sunday School lesson video. This is week six of our Sunday School lessons, and this week we are talking about um, God working through Moses to part the Red Sea. You might have heard people talk about that before. Maybe not sure 100% what that's about, but we're going to talk about it this morning. It comes from Exodus chapter 14. Um, and I'm not going to read the whole chapter to you, but I'm just going to kind of tell you a little bit about what happens in that particular chapter of God's Word. So there was a man whose name was Moses. And uh, Moses was called by God to lead God's people um, out of a place called Egypt where they were slaves into uh, a place that God had set aside for them called Canaan. Now, Canaan was referred to by God as the promised land, meaning God had promised that land to his people. And so he he got this guy Moses. He went to he went to Moses and he says, Moses, listen, you're a great leader and, and you do great things for my people. So I want to ask you to lead my people. You're gonna you're gonna help them escape from this bad, bad man, Pharaoh, and you're gonna help them go through the desert all the way to this new place called Canaan that I have set aside for, for everybody to live in so they can live safely and not have to be slaves anymore. And so when God called Moses to lead his people, um, Moses was really, really afraid. He did not want to be the leader. In fact, Moses said to God, he said, you know what, God, I don't think the people are going to listen to me because I don't really, I don't, I don't do very good when I'm talking in front of other people. So I don't think they're actually going to listen to me. I'm probably not the right person to be the leader. But God looked at Moses and said, Moses, I can help you do anything. I know that you can be a great leader. And you know what? Why don't you take Aaron, your friend Aaron, with you? And he can help you uh, when you're talking to the people. And so Moses finally gave in and he became the leader of the people. Now, when God called Moses into leadership, Israel, the people called Israel, God's people, they were living in a country called Egypt. And they were slaves in this country. And they were slaves under a very, very powerful man, but a very not nice man whose name was Pharaoh. Here's a few interesting things that God has told us about Pharaoh. First and foremost, he said that he had a hard heart. Now, um, we obviously aren't going to like reach inside of our chest and find out if our hearts feel soft or hard, but that's not what we're talking about. Okay, we're talking about being hard or soft when it comes to hearing about God. And a hard heart meant that Pharaoh did not want to hear about God. Pharaoh didn't believe in God and he didn't want to know God, and he didn't think God was real. And so Her Pharaoh had a, a hard heart. Um, Pharaoh, obviously, did not believe in God. He thought God was completely made up, that it was just a story that people told, and that God didn't really exist. And the other thing is, he did not treat God's people well at all. In fact, he made them live in terrible conditions and work very, very hard and, um, and sometimes, you know, didn't give them uh, any money or any food for all the work that they had done. So God told Moses that he was going to create a great big cloud in the sky, okay? And this great big cloud would be big enough for all the people of Israel or the people that are going to be called Israel eventually, God's people, uh, for all of God's people to see. So when that cloud arrived over top of them, Moses was supposed to gather God's people together and the people would come together because they saw this cloud and they were supposed to start this journey. Now this journey through the desert is going to be a very, very long journey. 
It's going to take Israel 40 years. 40 years. That's, that's longer than I am old. 40 years to walk through the desert. Every day, the people were supposed to um, go and follow wherever that cloud went. And sometimes they were even supposed to walk at night. And so that cloud would turn into fire so that they could see it as they were walking at nighttime. Well, that journey um, through the desert was definitely going to be difficult. But one thing stood in Moses' way and the people's way before they could even start walking through the desert. And it was this great big body of water, practically an ocean, called the Red Sea. There was no way for Israel to get around the Red Sea. If they were going to start walking through the desert and make it to the land that God had promised them, they had to go through the Red Sea. But if they tried to swim, it was so far, there's no way they could swim that far. If they tried to walk through it, well, it was so deep, they would drown. So God had to make a way for his people to cross that river or cross that sea. And so what God said was that at just the right time, Moses would be able to lift up a staff. Think about a shepherd, you know, that, that hook thing that they carry, the, the wooden stick. He would be able to lift up his staff and he would be able to just hold it out over the water and the Red Sea would split in half. Half the water up here, half the water over here, and it would stop flowing. And the people would be able to walk right through the Red Sea, right on dry ground that was beneath all the water. Sounds amazing, doesn't it? I mean, it sounds unbelievable, but this is the amazing kind of things that God does for his people. And so, sure enough, that's what happened. At the right time, the cloud appeared, the people gathered, and Moses started leading them. They got to the Red Sea, and Moses stuck out his staff, and the water split apart, and they walked right through. Now, just as God's people were making it to the other side of the Red Sea, that mean old man, Pharaoh, he realized that all of his Slaves were gone. There was nobody working anymore. And so he sent his army and his chariots, uh, a special kind of like um, a carriage that follows behind a horse. He sent his army and his chariots and his soldiers out to find them. And as the people were beginning to cross on that dry ground, the, the soldiers from Pharaoh saw them off in the distance walking through this amazing thing. You know, it was supposed to be the Red Sea, but, the, but they were walking right through it. And so Pharaoh's army went speeding after them, trying to catch them. And as Pharaoh's army got just to the edge of the Red Sea on one side, God's people were just finishing going through and they were safe on the other side. So Pharaoh's army goes right into the Red Sea and just as the army's in there, whoosh, the water comes down. And I suppose it's kind of sad, but all of those army men, they drowned. But God let that happen so that his people could be protected. You see, God does amazing, amazing things. For his people, for those who love him, for those who trust him, for those who believe in him, and for those who don't believe in him, like Pharaoh, you know, he doesn't work for their good. But for those people like you and I who do believe in him, who trust him, who love him, he's always working for our good. You know, this isn't the first time that God does something really amazing to save his people. Remember how we talked about Noah a few weeks ago? Noah and the ark and the great flood? Remember, God um, helped Noah to build this ark so that he and his family and two of each kind of animal would be able to get on the ark and stay safe and not have to perish in the flood. And by the way, this won't be the last time that God does something really amazing to save his people. 
In Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, the Apostle Paul writes this. He says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's God doing something amazing to save his people. At just the right time, even though we were still sinning, we were still doing all that stuff that God asked us not to do, we were hurting God's feelings in the midst of it. Even at that moment, just at the right time, while we were still sinning, God saved us. Isn't that amazing? It's so amazing. I hope that you guys have a great week this week, and I look forward to seeing you again uh, in future videos for our Sunday School. I hope you guys are, are enjoying our virtual Sunday School, and we look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Talk to you later.